Um, so a fishing episode that we have coming up, and by the time you see this, it should be Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. It'll air on Sportsman Channel. A salmon episode. So this took place in Manistee, Michigan, mm -hmm. and we're um, on the Manistee River. There's a salmon migration that happens there, and something I wanted to touch on on the podcast today is a lot of people, <clears throat> when they're talking about the salmon fishery, like – if you were just talking to somebody that salmon, they're like, oh, we don't even go anymore. So many people I talk to, they don't go anymore because the numbers are down. Yeah. So people that have historically gone every year, family trips, even Scott, he's like, ah, they're just not there in the numbers. You need any more to make it worth it. So we went up and I was like, oh, God, this is a typical Greenway Outdoors filming experience where <laughs> totally <laughs> we're going. Should have been here yesterday. Yeah, of course. We were slamming them yesterday. <laughs> so we went up there. And here's what I want to say from someone who lives here. Hadn't salmon fish before, but the numbers were there, I felt like. Yeah, um, well, yeah, they were jumping all around us. Yeah, there's there may be less for sure, um, but they were there. So what happened is back in, I, I want to say it was the 1960s, um, there was a um, there was an elwife population that was really high. Elwife is a small um, silver herring fish, and it was in the Great Lakes. And they said, hey, we'd like to knock these numbers down because there's too many of them. We could bring in salmon, which can handle fresh water, and then that would be great because it would create a fishery and they could eat all the elwives. So that happened and worked, and then it created like hundreds of millions of dollars industry. Just insane. Yeah. Like the Great Lakes salmon fishery generates a lot of money for the state, and it's amazing and it's great and everything like that. They built the fish hatcheries to release them, continue it going. All was well in the world. Well, when we brought in – and likely to the Great Lakes first, um, possibly Lake Sinclair, the Great Lakes first. They don't know exactly where. But likely from overseas, we brought in zebra mussels by accident. Yeah, uh, Zebra mussels came in, and what they do is they filter out microorganisms. So they're eating the um, zooplankton out of the water. And what that does is all the other organisms that were eating that zooplankton can't now because the zebra mussels are swiping it out. This hurts plant life. This hurts the, the entire – all of the balance the plankton of are like <clears throat> the key ingredients of the food chain everything because everything goes up from there so once you get rid of that what it does create is very clear water you know it's pretty oh, yeah. um clears out the water but not in a good way knocks out the life yeah and so what they're seeing now is because of that the l wife populations have just plummeted yeah with the l wife populations plummeting the dnr was forced to say okay if we continue to release the same amount of salmon the result will be bad because they'll eat all of them, and then we won't have a good migration back. A lot of them just won't make it. There won't be enough food for them. So they're trying to create that predator-prey balance, um, and it's a, it's a fine-tuned thing that they're working on right now. But as of 2020, when we went, um, I was pretty impressed with how many fish we did see. Um, yeah. Obviously, they're down, um, but I think it's still worth fishing. Yeah, I mean, we d didn't come out like, yay, that was the best trip of our lives. But you, if you had spent more time out there than we did, you, you'd do just fine. Yeah, yeah. Were you fishing in the fall? Yeah. It was the fall. Yeah. Yep. I've done that a couple times. That yeah. is a fun way to fish. How did you do it? We were throwing stick baits towards, like, the log jams, and, and we were getting some bites that way, but we ended up floating skein. Yeah, and that's that's the go-to is uh, uh, we did the in the beginning of the show – we actually caught our biggest one off of the stick baits, which is like um, it's like a skinnier Rapawa. It just acts a little bit different. It helps with the current a little bit better. Some people use Rapawas, but it's uh, it's like that. They're casting it up and running it in, and that's more of an aggravation strike. So the fish are in their holes um, as they're migrating. They're irritated by each other. I mean, they're just yeah. They got one thing on their mind, yeah. and uh, you're in the way of it. Sexy time, <laughs> yeah, sexy time. <laughs> so they bite out of that, and then we noticed that in the morning and night it seemed to work better. That oh, really? day, and then it was midday. We switched to the skein, okay. and uh, we did better that way. Good deal. Yeah. Did How many did you catch? I didn't catch very many, but the boat I was on, we boated. I mean, it was at least almost a dozen. It was it was fun. It nice. Was a blast. Did, did you did you go through anyone? a charter? Um, yes, I know a couple guys over in that area. Okay. Who do you know? Um, Doug Samsel is who I went with. He's been Doug up there Samsel. guiding on that river for years and years. Okay. Uh, used to be on our Nitro Pro team down here in Detroit. So nice. That's nice. how I met him. But it was a different way of fishing and a fun way of fishing. I don't know how fly fishermen ever get those salmon in on a, on a fly rod. <laughs> I the power that they have, you know. I, it's insane. Yeah. It's a, and they have the current working with them, too, and they're so strong. Yep. And they're, they're you know, even, I mean, as they get farther upstream. But we were getting them. 
where Manistee Lake dumps it and becomes Manistee River. We got a couple in there too. And that was that was something. Mm -hmm. That was they were angry. Really? Even the jacks, you know. Did you get any of the small ones? Yeah, we did catch a couple small ones. Yeah. and they were. I mean, they were going airborne. You know, yeah. we fighting them back in. It was yeah. interesting. Yeah. Did you get to eat any of them? Yeah, we smoked a few of them. What did you were, think? Yeah, they were good. They were great. Yeah, I think it's such a bad. People are like, oh, they're dying and they're disgusting and they no, black they're mouth and. They were still pretty silver. <clears throat> You're, they you're, good. you're picky. Yeah. And you liked them. I thought it was great. Do you, how did you guys cook them? Air fryer? Yeah, we air fried them. Yeah. Kayla liked them too? Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, they're, 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 they're pretty good. What What's your, uh, like, fishing choice? Like, what's your go-to when you're going out fishing, whether it's bass or... I love the smallmouth bass, and, and, and we've got the best spot, you know, in Lake St. <laughs> yeah. Clair. It's hard to it's hard for me to go yeah. anywhere else bass fishing if I'm not going to St. Clair. So. Yeah. Sure. When I see... Uh, um. There was something online the other day. It was a meme. It was like, if you could pick one lake to fish in your lifetime, what would it be? And it was Okeechobee. Uh, how do you say it? Okeechobee. 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 And then another one I hadn't heard of. And then Lake St. Clair. And I was like, well, I fish Lake St. Clair all the time. You yeah. don't realize how lucky you are to have no, it. Yeah. No, we don't. <coughs> but then you go to places like Idaho, and they're fishing those rivers. And they don't want to be there. 6,000 trout per mile. It was offensive. It was <laughs> offensive. Was it really? Yeah, they don't. It, it, they have no idea what they, they have. They think of rainbow trout. The way you think of bluegill, yeah, really? it's a weird mix, man. We have that episode coming out in probably a month and a half, two months. That one is going to be something special. We went out with the Department of Natural Resources there, and we did the shocking efforts. So oh, the wow. rainbow trout on there are super overpopulated, uh, and they're out competing the native uh, cutthroat. So they're transplanting the rainbows to other rivers to give the cutthroat the space they need to get the population oh, numbers gotcha. back to how they should be. Well, depending on who you ask, that's the scientific yeah. story. Uh, there's people that have no basis on science that disagree with it, but that's what's happening. Yeah, we came back after doing the electroshocking. We came back, and there was <laughs> notes on all the trucks protesting what oh. we were doing. Yeah. It was pretty interesting to see the the opinions right, something, right there in front of us. Something, man. It's, I always say, like, when you're casting, every cast you make, it's like, especially in new waters, you're, like, asking a question in a way where you're like, What's there? What could happen? What w What's down there? You're like trying to get an assessment. And when you're shocking it and you're seeing everything that's in the water, you're like, I casted there 44 times and didn't get a bite. <laughs> and there's so many fish here. It like changes the way you think about yeah, it. Yeah, like it was it was incredible just just watching all the fish come up. Like it we, must seen, we must have seen thousands of fish, but you couldn't net them quick enough to catch them all. I did my best, Ryan. Oh, I'm I just know. kidding. No, it was that was a workout. I didn't think that would be like a physical difficulty yeah and they have this uh system set up where they they put chips in the trout's head and then you can take the chipped trout to the dnr and they'll they'll scan them and there'll be that the chip has a prize like a monetary prize it's wow. worth a certain amount of money to try to get people to go fishing for them it was it's pretty a interesting report with like 50 to a, 50 to a thousand yeah 50 to a thousand dollars per fish that wow. you get and i would say for every 30 fish we caught when we had one or two yeah. Really? Yeah. So it's yeah. like a – and catching 30 fish sounds like a lot, not there. Really? Yeah, they would consider that like an okay day. So like <laughs> nearly nearly every time they go out, they get at least one tag. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. You got to be willing to like travel around with fish heads to the DNR office to get it handled, but – That's true. I mean, but I they, they were saying – the guys we were with saying the tagged fish that they catch pays for all their fishing for the year. Yeah. Wow. So it, it's pretty impressive and a cool system. 